You've probably seen your favorite internet personality preaching the power of the cold shower. Cold shower. Cold shower. Cold exposure. Cold showers. You may have even seen a gigatech productivity guru, life coach, fitness millionaire alpha going one step further and taking a daily dunk into an ice bath. But does any of this stuff actually work? And more importantly, should you really be putting yourself through the pain of seeing your plums retract into your body every day for five minutes? So the claims are quite simple. It improves sleep quality, boosts your immune system, builds mental resilience, shrinks your testicles, and improves muscle recovery. But the evidence is actually quite conflicting. Some shows that there's no benefit to cold exposure in terms of muscle recovery, and others say it might actually damage your muscle gains. So naturally, I'm going to try the most reliable source of scientific material is trying it myself. Now I've taken cold shower Many a times I've seen my soldier disappear into battle and luckily he's come back unscathed. But I'm not really entirely sure what the dangers of an ice bath really are. The risks of an ice bath include hypothermia, frostbite, nausea, dizziness, skin irritation, and discomfort. But most people shouldn't really be concerned about this unless you have any of these conditions. The only real problem is if you stay in there too long, you might die. My face is red because it's cold and I'm Scottish. But we have two kilos. If that's not enough, I'll just have to go buy more. I've obtained the goods. I'll probably just chuck them in the freezer because I'm only going to have an ice bath tonight to see if it actually helps my sleep quality. So I guess I'm going to have to start damaging my muscles to test this out. Ice bath should help me recover faster, and it does this by making your blood vessels constrict, which can help flush out waste products like lactic acid, helping you recover faster. However, a small 2015 study of physically active men found that ice baths after strength training hindered muscle growth more than those who did active recovery, and the explanation for this is actually pretty simple. You have a stimulus, you recover, you adapt, and you repeat. If you shorten that recovery cycle by using things like ice baths, the adaptation ends up being worse. So are ice baths all lies? You're a fake and a fraud! Well, not exactly. If you're running to get better at running, you don't want to have an ice bath. But if you're running to run, for example, running away from a slow and painful inevitable zombie death, well, the adaptation from that doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're recovered and ready to run for your life the next day. So the main takeaway is if you're in a post-apocalyptic world where your ability to run away from mindless morons is life or death, spend 5,000 pounds on an ice bath and classic chiller. But it's not only just about athletes and lifters. There appears to be a lot of other benefits to cold exposure, which we're going to put to the test. But first, I kind of just need to figure out how to actually set this up. So I'm reading this website that says to take an ice bath, one typically fills up a tub with cold water and adds ice to lower the temperature. You need to add a hundred pounds of ice. Oh, well, we have two kilos. Huh? This website says to buy a livestock trough, which I don't think I'm going to be doing. Get in a chest freezer. It also says invite friends over to use the bath. I feel like uh, we're not having the same kind of experience here. <laughs> oh my God, that's cold. I could instantly tell that one of the benefits was definitely true. My whole body's cold, but honestly my balls are the coldest part. After spending roughly 30 seconds half submerged in what I can only describe as a cold bath that I didn't fit in, I felt the urge to just boast on social media about how hard I work and how much better I am than everyone else. Other than that side effect, a study found that people who took cold showers for at least 30 seconds every day for one month called in sick 29% less than people who don't hate themselves and 54% less if they combine this with exercise. And the irrefutable evidence is that in the 14 hours since I had my ice bath, I didn't get ill either. Now if my weak chin vibrating is anything to go by, repeatedly doing this would build your mental resilience. However, if you're already challenging yourself in many other aspects in your life, this probably isn't going to benefit you that much. Why did I choose YouTube? However, there are some studies that suggest that cold therapy stimulates the vagus nerve, which can reduce your daily stress. There's the timer. Ugh. I mean, all the ice is gone, so... Not really a very good ice bath, is it? The final test is to see how it affects my sleep doing this late at night. And that's part of the side effect of the cold exposure. It wakens you up, makes you feel more alert. So if you have it right before you go to bed, you're probably not going to sleep that well. However, if you do it in the morning, if you're feeling a bit groggy, it can help you be a bit more alert and more productive throughout the day. So do I recommend an ice bath, cold exposure, cold showers? Well, if you want to take an ice bath at home and you need 100 pounds of ice, I mean, in the UK, that's going to cost you around £45, and you have to manage to also get it home somehow. For that same price, I found that you could just 
fly to Poland and probably dip yourself into a cold ice lake and have the same effect and a fun holiday at the same time. And given you're not really going to get any strength benefits or muscle effects from this, probably not worth doing unless you're a high level competitive athlete that needs to be recharged for the next day or you're running away from the zombies. However, all of the other benefits that are there would suggest to me that it's probably worth if you're showering in the morning at the end of your shower, turning it down to cold for around 30 seconds. That is, as long as you don't mind temporarily losing 20 to 30% of your girth.